Hello there, Gloversville High School students. It's me, Dr. DeMalley, and this is... Mr. Dennis By, the Associate Principal. And we're here to give you our day one speeches. Normally, we'd bring you all together in an auditorium, but this year is like no other. So please pay attention. We're going to talk for the next 10 or 15 minutes, and we're going to get through some of the safety procedures that you need to know. As you entered the building today, you notice you got your temperature taken. You should also have noticed that you have one-way hallways. Okay, that's going to take getting used to. Do your best. We understand mistakes will be made, but by the end of the week, we expect you to have those one-way hallways down. Also, there's going to be an attestation that you're going to have to complete once a week. That comes in the form of an app called Easy Scan. Check the website. It's not up and running just yet, but we want you to know about it. You'll be asked a series of questions. You'll have to answer each week. You or your parent. If you do not, we were going to have to pull you out of class and make sure that that get, does get completed. So make sure you're doing that prior to coming to school. And that, that, that attestation is just uh, uh, looking for confirmation that you haven't left the area, that you haven't traveled anywhere, that you're not feeling ill. Uh, and I think that's going to be like twice a week, I think, is our, uh, our goal to have you do that. Um, Let's talk about masks, and uh, you started with the one-way hallways. Obviously, we've done everything that we could possibly think of to keep everybody safe. Uh, we've cut our class sizes in half, uh, cafeteria. Um, you will need to stay six feet uh, away from somebody or the next person or wear a mask. Um, and in some cases, you'll do both. In the cafeteria line, for instance, you're going to be in line, and there are markers set six feet apart. But while you're in line, unfortunately, you'll have to keep your mask on because other people will be passing you. So we don't want you taking your mask off until you're in your seat getting ready to eat. Is that correct? That is correct. And don't forget, the line is going to look very different this year. We only have one serving line. Right. One serving line, and the line will take you out into the hallway. So you'll have to be waiting. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to be patient. But as Mr. By just said, our class sizes are cut in half. There, was only, there are going to be less than 100 students in the cafeteria at the time. To get us started, everyone must eat in the cafeteria. Again, let me repeat that. Everyone must eat in the cafeteria just to start, okay? Then we're going to get out some privileges so you can be outside, do some things like that. But we got to get started and we got to stay safe. So um, that's the cafeteria procedure. Yep. Um, and again, safety is going to be our number one thing. So... Um, teachers are going to ask you to put on a mask in class. You need to put it on as they walk around checking work, for instance. For the most part, you're going to be six feet away um, and not have to wear a mask. Uh, but there will be times when that teacher is going to say, put on your mask. You need to go to the bathroom. Someone's going to need to go. You're going to have to put that mask on. Um, it is not optional. In the hallways, it needs to be on. And like Dr. Bally said, everything's going to be one way. It won't take you any time at all. They're well marked. There's some tape on the floors. There's signs on the wall. And just follow the herd. And, and again, you know, the mask wearing, that is essential in keeping our, our infection rate down. I did a um, mask wearing 101. It's on the website. It's on the Facebook page. Check that out. We don't want to... We want to keep reminding you of that, that it's very important because we want to stay open all year long. While we're on safety, yep. we want to finish the end of the day. So that's throughout the day. There are no sports, no clubs uh, commencing until at least October 1st. Um, so we're going to have all students out of the building by 245. Bell rings at 228, I believe, is the last bell. So you'll have 15 minutes to go see that teacher if you need extra help or you didn't get the assignment or something. But uh, at 245, we're going to ask all the students to be out of the building. Uh, staff will be following shortly thereafter because we the uh, cleaning crew really needs to get to work. They are going to be deep cleaning every single classroom, every desk, every desk, chair, teacher's desk, teacher's chairs. They got a lot of work to do and uh, they need to start as soon as possible. So the goal is going to be to vacate the building. Uh, hopefully by three o'clock, it'll just be Dr. DeMalley and I. Um, I know some of those teachers aren't going to like it because they stay late. But uh, we really need to get these uh, classrooms empty so the custodians can get to work. And just as Mr. By said, look at all the counter space right here in the library. All of this has to be cleaned before you come in each morning. So it's not just the classroom areas. It's the bathrooms. It's the door handles. It's the um, handrails, everything like that. So, again, please make arrangements to be out of the building as soon as you possibly can at, at around 2.45 p.m. Well, you mentioned the library. Thank you. 
uh, while we're on the library, uh, there will be no pre-signed passes to the library, or there may be a pre-signed pass if a teacher uh, needs you to get to the library, but you still need to report to your study hall uh, teachers first. There is a, a document online that have been shared with your teachers, uh, created by Ms. Carla Bangle, I believe, which is, I understand is an awesome document, so that teachers will be able to um, ascertain in real time how many students are in here and if there's room for another student. So this is all new, we're working our way through it, but you should know that ahead of time that um, you know, library used to be a nice, great place for students to come out, hang out, and do some quiet work, but you're just gonna have to check this year. Again, just to get us started, you know, I know it looks like a big space, but again, we have to keep these areas clean. They have to be cleaned when you leave as well. So we can only allow a certain amount of time in. The easiest rule of thumb with the library and the study halls, do not leave that study hall unless directed by the study hall teacher. And if the there's room in the library, you'll be able to go. Okay. The uh, Career and Tech Center. Uh, there was a question at the board meeting from the board, from your representative, the student board member. Career and Tech is open every day. For, you, for students, obviously you're in the hybrid model. You can go to the Career and Tech Center every day. Okay, if you can get to the high school campus prior to you when your bus leaves. The AM bus leaves at approximately 8.35. The PM bus leaves at approximately 11.35. If you get up here a little bit early, we'll take your temperature. We have a space for you to go, so don't worry about getting up here early. You can also, if you would like, eat your lunch prior to getting on that bus. But if you want to go to the Career and Tech Center every day, you have the ability to do so. And along, along with that, there have been a couple of questions. If, if, if your parent's able to take you there so you don't need the bus, that is perfectly okay. Um, if you're old enough to drive and you have your own uh, vehicle to get there, there is a process that you will fill out some paperwork, takes three minutes, and then you would be able to drive. And, uh, but they also need to have your park, parking permit there. So, but if you're going to CDC and uh, you need transportation, it will be leaving uh, on time here every day, morning and afternoon. Seniors, we are going to hold off on the senior privileges for a little bit. Um, but I'm going to give you a ray of hope. Uh, we are looking at allowing, if you have a first period study hall or even a second period study hall, to come in later. And possibly, if you have a end of the day study hall, to leave early. We just cannot have the traffic in and out of the school like we did before during that lunch period. But again, we are holding off on that for at least the first five weeks. We have to get some better footing in opening these doors and adjusted to these schedules. But seniors, hold on. We're, we are trying. It will happen. I promise you. Okay? Yep. And I guess the last thing we want to talk about is our Chromebooks. Chromebooks. Go uh, ahead, Mr. By. Well, uh, unfortunately, we have hundreds that have not been turned in. Correct. Um, the number might be down. Uh, take the S off, maybe 150, something like that, that are still out there not turned in. So they, we've had to redo the process here a little bit. Um, we will give you a Chromebook. Um, we're going to try to get the old one back, but there's a new charge of $250 now for Chromebooks not returned. Um, there's also a, uh, a small, a lot of Chromebooks came back with missing keys or the screen cracked and, and that made students not want to bring them back, I believe. Um, there's a very small uh, $20 uh, fee that you can pay that will buy insurance. Uh, if your Chromebook is broken, if it's got a cracked screen, if it's got missing keys. Now, if it totally shows, the, you know, if it's missing, uh, $20 is not going to buy another one. So that insurance won't cost. But a lot of the time, we've got broken Chromebooks. So uh, talk to your parents. All this information is online. Um, and they can actually pay it online for, for the insurance. And I highly recommend it because I've been dealing with this now since these Chromebooks came out. Uh, they do get dropped. It is well worth the $20, and I'm really glad they uh, came out with that program. And the $20 can be paid in increments through PayPal. But again, it's a $250 replace, replacement fee. That $20 for the insurance is non-refundable, and it only talks about, again, as Mr. Bice said, smaller repairs. So because of that shortage of Chromebooks, um, we just spent the last two days distributing Chromebooks to the students that are on totally remote learning. Uh, so now the balance will be distributed to the students that are here in the building. What we'll have to ascertain 
class by class starting uh, this morning is uh, who actually needs one. If you've got a laptop at home, a desktop, and you don't need a Chromebook, you don't need a Chromebook. Um, but if you need one, we're going to be starting first period, starting with the seniors, I believe, um, to get Chromebooks into the hands of uh, as many students as we can. We do have a new shipment coming, so by the end of next week, we'll have enough for everybody. So if you don't get a Chromebook in the next day or two, you'll be okay. And it's okay if you don't have one to start out with. We're planning on everybody having one, but just in the event you don't have one, be patient, you'll get one, and we'll work the attendance accordingly. The biggest thing that you need to remember before we really wrap this up is this. You need to log on to your Google Classrooms for each one of your mm. core classes every single day. That's important. That's right. Log in every single day. Your teachers are going to give you directions over these next two days, and some of them, some of them, pay attention, you ready? They are going to be streaming their class live at the time you're supposed to be in the class. Some yeah. of them will not. As I said, it's going to be a little clunky to start. But the goal is, is to get you there, get you to follow your schedule even when you're at home. So some teachers have already started. Pay attention to those teachers, follow their expectations, log in every day regardless of what's going on. Yeah, we've said it before. If you were here last year from March to June, it's not going to be like that this year. You have to learn. We have already have to cut the curriculum down a whole lot. So... Teachers aren't going to be able to teach everything they want to, and in some cases, what they need to. So every minute your teacher has with you is going to be important. Um, and again, this is your education. They've already gone through it. We've gone through it. At the end of the day, we're giving you foundation for things that you need to know. So take control of your own education, please. And, and the last thing I want to tell you is this. Our goal is to make sure that you are working a normal school day even when you're not here. Most of us last year, as Mr. Bai said, on March 13th, you know, we're doing work at 6 o'clock, doing work at 7 o'clock, doing work at 10 o'clock, and the teachers were helping you out. Uh, we're a little bit older. We're, we, need a, uh, we need a little bit better of a schedule. So that's what we mean when we're going to get better at remote learning. We're going to have a hard schedule. You're going to have set expectations when to get work in, but be patient. We're going to get there. Yep. We just need to get off the ground. So I think... We're all set. I think that's it. We've taken enough of the teacher's time. Welcome to Gloversville High School for those that are new. And um, for those that have been around, particularly the seniors, I hope this is a, a better senior year for you than the last one was because uh, yep. things are getting better every day. And we're so happy to welcome all of you. We're oh, excited. Yeah. Thank God we're back to a little bit of normalcy. And hopefully wear those masks and we'll stay the course and we're going to get better each and every day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.